her this structure so she can stay over there, just relaxing. Isso aqui que é peixe. Hum. Valeu, valeu. Hum. Apparently this is normal. We are spotting an old shipwreck. Good morning guys from Bragança in the north of Brazil. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We are going to be spending a day seeing what it's like to be a fisherman here. So, should be an interesting day. Yesterday we got some lychee. This fruit is awesome. It's one of my favorites. Haven't had it in a while. Lindsay, have you had it? Uh, I've had it before, but not recently. And we just have a plastic bag which, with a bunch of lychee in it. So we're going to have this in the car. We are currently in a hostel, but there is nobody else here. It's just us. You ready? Ready to go. Will you hold my lychees? <laughs> okay, now we're gonna eat the apludan or lychia. Depends where you are, you say it differently depending where you are in Brazil or where you are in the world. We call this lychee back home and some places I've heard it called rambudan. But this is a really good fruit. It's kind of like a grape on the inside with a pit. But the outside is awesome. It just looks like a furry red ball. I've tried this once, but I kind of forget how you eat it. So Alex needs to show me how to do this. So I learned how to do this in Costa Rica. They were all in the trees. I went with a machete and cut them down. And this is how you do it. You grab it with both hands and you turn like an Indian sunburn. <laughs> turn it and it opens oh. the shell like that. Little jelly ball inside. So I'm gonna let Lindsay take a little bite here. <laughs> it's hard not to take the whole thing. How is it? Good. Sweet. A little bit chewy. But soft at the same time. So to me it really tastes like a peeled grape. If you've ever taken the rind off of a grape, which kids sometimes take the time to do, then it's just like the inside of a grape. That's how it tastes, but then it has a little pit in there, so you have to eat around the pit. Yeah, it's very similar. juicy and sweet. Or you can just take the whole thing and then spit the pit back out in there. That's the pit. Mm. The little car snack. So there it is. Lichia, one of my favorite fruits. Acai. Yes, amigo. Hey, what's that litro? Our guide knows we love acai, so we're looking for it everywhere we go. So we just asked this guy on the side of the road if he has acai, because a lot of these places that say they have it, at the moment, they sometimes don't have it. We are planning for lunch. Lunch is still a few hours away, but we're going to take this with us to lunch so we can have it. We're going to get one liter of acai. That's a good guide. Yeah. <laughs> he has a bag of acai. How's the outside look? Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> Entering the fisherman's village now. Look at all of these houses built on stilts and all of the colors. This place is very unique. Can't wait to explore. So this first region is where the people actually uh, go fishing. There's two types of fishing. There is fishermen who just fish into this region and there is fishermen who goes into the deep area of the ocean and they come back in here to commercialize. So this is the first area, like a small fair, where you yeah. can come and just buy fish, fresh fish to eat. Before we go out on the boat, we are having a small little appetizer of a mussel stew. So you can see the mussel pieces in there. Let's try it. Mm. 
the soup in your course. I love mussels. So there's the mussels in there, and then there's onion, broth. What else? I don't know. A few other things. And they seem to be using the traditional bowls. These are the ones that we saw yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can tell these are the ones that we were looking at yesterday that they make here out of the clay from this area. You can see that it's brown on the bottom and it's a little more burnt inside so that they can put the food in there and it keeps it really hot. Ooh, I love these bowls. Oh. They just we should bring some. So the lines and the holes in this wood were made from Turu. Turu is a worm that lives in here. Okay, now we're getting on a boat. We're gonna go on a little tour around here and see what they do. It's like a boat graveyard. The tide will come up later and then you can move these. There's two of those guaras. So this bird is extremely red, pinkish, kind of like a flamingo, but I mean not like a flamingo, but its own color but as vibrant as a flamingo, which is crazy because not many birds are that vibrant and colorful. The shrimp and the crabs that they eat in this area, those are red and somehow the coloring from what they eat goes into their body and it comes out in their feathers. They are so pretty, they stand out even from really far away. So she can stay over there, just relaxing, and they're it's making nice. some. It's, it's a it's a frango fish. Fish, fish. They have fish. They have chicken over there. Looks good. <laughs> I like this. This is a fish. Pegado, a gente pega no mar e assa para comer. She's telling you that she just fish it on the sea and then prepare it to eat. Easy. This is called bagri. Mm. Valeu, valeu, valeu. Mm. <laughs> Bom, muito. Mm -hmm. Isso. Obrigado. Tá. Tchau. Okay, this is our boat. Let's go. Our new boat, our new friends. See the water dripping a little bit into here. <laughs> we are seeing the mangroves during low tide, so we can see all the roots that are normally underwater. So in a few hours, all of this is going to be covered. You won't be able to see any of the roots. Amazing what a difference high tide versus low tide is. <laughs> that is amazing!
This is something new to us. We have never seen jumping fish like this. You can actually see them. They seem to jump away from us when they see our boat come in. They are called trayoto. They fully get out of the water when they're swimming. And you can actually see them. They're kind of like this white translucent color. Look at this half sunken ship over here. We've seen a lot of these in Brazil. Oh, I know. You should break. You should break. <laughs> Very good. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is uh, how you break. <laughs> Right now we are walking over part of the ship. When you see things like this, it really makes you want to know the story behind it. Like, how did this happen? What happened? It's a really, really big ship too. It starts all the way down there. Since we can't really show it on camera, we're going to try to take a drone up and show you guys how big this thing is. So we asked the guy if he knows how old the shipwreck is. It looks pretty old, so we were curious. He said he doesn't really know. He said if he were to ask his grandfather, even his grandfather wouldn't know. Apparently that's kind of like a common phrase of speech when something's very old and no one really knows how old it is, that even their grandfather or grandfather's grandfather wouldn't know. So, there it's you have it. Old. A few hundred years old, I'm sure. It's just like the ribs of the ship. It looks like a skeleton. And there are pieces even here. It's like we would be inside of it right now, right here. And look at the barnacles taking over. Just since we've been here for like 10, 15 minutes, the tide has come up a lot. And now we're kind of stuck here. <laughs> if we were here for another 10 minutes, maybe 20, I think we'd all be underwater right now. He's out in the, the mangroves over there, looking for his friend. Forgot about us. We have 10 minutes left before we have to swim. So, last bit of land here. It's still shallow around here, but here we are. Good to go. Just got on the boat. Look, no land left over here.
Wow, this is where we were walking when we came in here. Remember this? This is Manuel. So this is Manuel and he is a fisherman, so we're going to ask him a few questions about what he does here as a fisherman in this town. So this is his boat. Okay, now actually we're going to talk to another fisherman over here and they're going to tell us a little bit about it. This is Manuel, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Manuel in his fishing boat. He has some of his equipment right here. We're going to ask him a few questions. I haven't thought of any, but I'll think of some on the spot. Um, so what hours does he usually work? What time does he start in the morning and what time does he finish? Hours. E agora o tempo todo que eu já pesquei. 50 years fishing of his life. And nowadays he spends like three to four hours a day fishing nearby this region in here. How many um, different types of fish does he catch? Quantos tipos de peixe does he catch? 15, 15 years fishing he could get the bigger fish he get was the metal fish like 178 kilos 108 kilos mm -hmm. and this there's the pescadas with 15 kilos uh, 20 kilos depending on the region that he actually was fishing so this is the equipment that they use they have the flags and they use those as markers for where they put the nets down so they know where to go back to collect the fish Okay, we're about to have a watch. This dish is special. This is stingray. We have never had stingray before. So it's stingray... <laughs> jambu, right? It's stingray and jambu in there. We have some rice and then we have a tukupi sauce on the side. This is going to be special. Okay, let's try stingray for the first time. Wow, that's that's awesome. But I don't know if it's so much the flavor of the jambu, the stingray. Are there other things in there? It's like it's very saucy. Tem mais alguma coisa do que o peixe e o jambu aí dentro? So it's very moist. It has a lot of flavor in there. So we have some fried yuca here. We have a beef with some onions, rice. Noodles, yep. a little side of noodles, a different fish, like a fried fish. So we just finished lunch and they set up some hammocks for us so that we could just lay down and hang out for half an hour after we had our acai because they knew we would want to rest. People keep commenting. Do you want to stay upstairs? No. How's it feel? <laughs> you look like a baby in a womb. <laughs> it's really comfortable. We get a nice view. Maybe take a little nap after our acai and lunch. Thursday, guys. We are in Belém, but we are leaving today. We've been staying at the Atrium Hotel while we've been staying in Belém, and we love this hotel. If you guys come here, make sure you stay here. We enjoyed it. We actually don't want to leave. So. so now we're hopping on a plane, and you will see where we're going when we get there. Surprise! <laughs> Thank you. 
small one in here, it might be for like for two hours of rain, then stop. But for two days, We did it. We found Acai at the Belém airport. We didn't know if we were going to be able to. This is sadly our last real Acai in Brazil, most likely. Very sad. Catching our flight. So as you guys know, we put out videos on YouTube, we put out as much content as we can, but we can't put out everything on YouTube. We also have shorter video clips and photos that we can't put here. So if you want to see more, follow us on Instagram, Lindsay Travelbum and Alexander Travelbum. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this one, click one of these. And subscribe right here because we're traveling all around the world and we're sharing the whole thing with you.